Today, I'm going to build a small little project. Um, my wife ordered one of these to display some spoons as a gift. Uh, and it came in broken. <laughs> and I thought, well, we can glue them back on, but most of the pieces were missing that we needed. So I thought, well, oh, this is pretty cheaply made and not very good or strong because these just break off because uh, of the cross grain right here. So I thought I can make it better. However, it doesn't need to be made out of a very fancy piece of wood because it's only going to hold some spoons on it and be hung on a wall. So this is one of those projects where pine can work. So we're going to take a board just like this, same size, uh, a little smaller because we don't need this much wood. And we are going to resaw it and plane it and cut it and stain it and finish it to make it look like this. So this will display the spoons she's looking for. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did every little step of the way. So let's build it. So the first thing we need to do is resaw our piece of wood. Now depending on your saw, you can take a larger cut through your board with your table saw, or you can take a more shallow pass with it. Uh, depending on what you're comfortable with, you can do whatever feels best for you. I didn't cut all the way through. I decided to use my handsaw to complete the rip of this board. So I learned that I should have went a little deeper uh, and this would have probably been a lot easier, and I went ahead to hire some help here to do so. The next step is planing my board using my hand plane, uh, and most of these shots are sped up so that you're not seeing this process uh, over the length of an hour. Uh, then we go on to jointing the edges of the two boards that I ripped in half, so that we can glue them together and get a nice even flat board. I did a review on this router fence uh, that I'm using for jointing these edges and on the top right hand side of the screen I'll have a link there that you can click on and go check out that review if you're interested in that. Uh, now we're doing the glue up the edges were nice and flat, so they went together well. Uh, I put a, enough clamping pressure on here to get a very slight amount of squeeze out. Uh, I don't want to make them too tight. Uh, it'll warp the boards. And then I use the hand plane to flatten the board again, um, make it nice and level. I have to admit I'm actually enjoying using the hand plane uh, on this project. I think I'm getting a lot better at using it since I first started. And now it's time for everybody's favorite woodworking activity, sanding. Thankfully this is a small project and the sanding goes quite quickly. <laughs> I laid the spoons out on the board and drew a pattern around them to get my template. Use some round edges I had to make some nice even curves. And I'll come back later after I get everything to the right dimensions and then use a piece of paper to make both sides symmetrical. All right, let's get this thing cut out. So I grabbed the jigsaw because of all the curves I want to get close to the lines, but I'm not actually cutting on the lines. 
I'll take this over to the sander and I will get right up on there with that. But this gets me really close and I'm able to make those lines nice and wavy. And I don't actually work this fast. Again, remember, I've sped this up. So don't try and go through this with a jigsaw at a super fast rate and you'll end up either ruining your project or hurting yourself. Now I'll take the project over to the oscillating sander um, where I have to use my flip cart to get access to that. I have my miter saw on the other side. Uh, this flip cart I used Drew Fisher's design from Fisher Shops uh, because the design actually is a, quite an easy build and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below uh, if you want to go check out his video and get the plans. Now I'm going to take uh, the leftover pieces of pine that I have and I'm going to make the spoon rest holders. And so I'm drilling out the center holes where the spoons are going to go. From here We'll go over to the table saw and cut out the slots uh, using one of the worst miter gauges known to humankind. It's not very good, but it's what I needed to get this little job done. To finish the spoon holders up, I'll first rip them with the table saw and then take them over on the bench and cut the edges off using the pull saw. Since I'm using pine, I want to be careful not to break the wood because it's not that sturdy lengthwise. Uh, so that's why I'm using the pull saw. Uh, otherwise, if I use the table saw, it could end up breaking it from the force of the saw blade pulling down on it. So I just wanted to be a little extra careful on these to keep them together. It was quick and easy with the pine being so soft. And then the final shelf that I want to make is this bottom piece that I take over to the table saw to make a 45 degree edge on the bottom, uh, which I'll also put onto the sides. I was originally going to make more of a built-in box for this, but there wasn't really enough room and I think it would have been too big. So I think the shelf uh, was the better choice. So I, I just figured a 45 degree edge on all of these uh, will just give it a nicer look. And over at the router table, I'll use a 1 8 inch round over bit to put a slight round over on this backboard uh, the whole way around. Gives it a nice little soft edge to it. Uh, just that little added feature that brings this whole thing together. And I'll also do a round over on all of those spoon holders uh, that are going to be up on the top part. And then we get back to sanding. So I get the front all nice and flat and sand it smooth. I start at a 80 grit and then go up to a 120 and then a 180 grit is what I end up with on the orbital sander. And then I sand all of the little spoon holders and the shelf by hand. And then it's time for our glue up. So I carefully place all of the pieces down to line them up and then I use wood glue to glue them permanently and I am assisted with a little CA glue to hold it in place uh, and use that pressure to hold it down right away. I didn't want to use clamps because those pieces are pretty small and again because it's pine it's quite fragile. I ended up coming back and using my pin nail gun to put two pins in each of those spoon holders and the shelf at the bottom just 
so that if there was any pull down on it, it wouldn't pull it out and off uh, from the backing board. And now that it's all put together, there is just one final thing to do, and that is stain and finish it. So I'm using a walnut stain uh, because the silver spoons I feel would really stand out against this dark background. I use a rag to apply the stain throughout the whole board into the little crevices of the spoon holders, the shelf, and the back. I let it sit for about five minutes and then I come back and wipe it off with a nice clean rag just to get any excess stain off of it to avoid dark splotchy uh, patterns. After I'm finished applying the stain, I'll flatten those rags out and put them on the garage floor to dry out overnight and then throw them away. We don't want to have any fires in the garage or house or anything like that, so always use caution even if it's just a little bit of stain. Better, better to be careful than sorry. And then I come over and I apply two coats of uh, polycrylic and in between coats I'll give it a light sanding. And then on the final coat I will sand it extremely lightly with a thousand grit sandpaper uh, just to smooth out any bumps or little embellishes on it. We end with a nice satin finish which I prefer over a high gloss. And then I put the backing hanging piece on there. Uh, use my center hole punch to make sure that that screws are going to be lined up correctly. And then screw it into the back to add that final finishing touch. And as you can see, my cameraman and producer came over to make sure that the final pieces were installed properly. Uh, I did get some feedback he didn't like, so. However, if you liked the video and you feel I deserve it, please subscribe, give a like, uh, whatever you want to do. Give a comment and let me know if there's something you would have done differently. Uh, but. I think that the project came out nice, and my wife was happy, and her mother was happy receiving the gift as well. Thank you again for watching, and get out there and build something. We'll see you again on the next one.